Well, I'm writing a book called Modern Day Monk, just based upon my experience um, with the course, but mostly here at the monastery and working with messengers and with David. <clears throat> and really just kind of winding my story into these deep lessons, like attentiveness and um, what mind training is, compromise, just on and on. Uh, and I just line up, I've, I have, I don't know, 12 to 14 chapters, something like that. I'm still in the last two or three chapters writing those. What a special relationship is um, as compared to a holy relationship that's been looked at very closely by me over the last year and a half with Suzanne and um, just in, uh, topics that have been really topics and lessons that have been very close and, and that I've just had to walk through um, kind of uh, sometimes it seems like a trudge but it's actually been hugely beneficial and really just shifted the trajectory of my life so completely um, I just felt like it was time to start writing about it so it's maybe m more of just a, this stability that I feel that's that's been reached from which I can go deeper and so it's it's basically the initial stability that I'm feeling um, and I'm just looking back and saying, okay, I went from this mind that was <clears throat> a train wreck, um, nothing but instability, projection, guilt, fear, self-hatred, just pretty much that was my life all day long, depression. Mm -hmm. And what steps did I take to reach a point of feeling like now there's this foundation from which I can springboard f forward quote unquote, um, into a much deeper state. But no, it's just, it's a step. It's basically a step, but a very deep step that appeared to have taken a few years to, you know, to go through lots of expression. That's another part of the book that, you know, is just, has been so pivotal in my life. Just the ability to, in my life since I've been here, just the ability to come and say, everything that's on my mind you know no private thoughts no people pleasing and say it where I'm in any manner that I need to at the time and always be met with love and never be met never met with anger or projection or guilt um, and so just all those lessons that are so really into the world unbelievable <clears throat> and um, and there's really no in the world there's no common ground between a true spiritual path and um, which is what's going on here and what's going on in the world and just how much mental energy it's taken for me to pull away from that and an analogy I love is like an aircraft carrier it's you know, four football fields, and it takes a lot to turn that thing, you know, and that's kind of the ego mind. It's like this massive aircraft carrier that is trying to do a 180, and it gets sideways in the waves, and then it's, you know, then the mind is, it, because pots and pans are falling off, the mind is judging, oh, uh, something's terribly wrong here. So everything tries to keep inertia headed in, you know, one direction, and and really we're pulling away from the inertia, and that's what I feel like. It's just... That's why the book is coming because I've I feel like I've pulled away from the in initial intensity and the initial inertia, and got the ship turned where it's getting much easier. Um, the upsets, those deep, the period of deep upset all the time is has is for the most part gone and has been washed. <clears throat> that doesn't mean the intensity is done. Um, that seems to pop up periodically, but. But the tools are there to begin working at a much deeper level. Well, I think the thing for me is that I just, I can see the story and I just, when it comes up, I see the mind wanting, the ego wanting to go toward it and to get enmeshed in it and then to follow it. And, um, and it's just more of 
say no, you know, I don't believe that anymore. Um, and, and, and I don't, I can see when I want to go into it, when my mind kind of starts veering that way and then just being able to pull back. And I, I know Jason told me one time, you know, I was going through an intense time and he said, you know, this is a decision. It's just coming to that, that realization that this is a decision that this, this piece is running right beside all of these thoughts of upset <clears throat> and we're literally choosing these thoughts of upset we can choose those thoughts of peace whenever we want and it's coming to that realization Jason said you know um, he was taking me to an expression he said you might have to choose between here and the expression session a thousand times choose for peace a thousand times and you know just the next two minutes or whatever and that's really what it boils down to that's that's <clears throat> that starts pulling us out of this dream of that created that that made the upset you might say so as we choose these thoughts that are running through our mind which aren't true we get the totality of the ego's world which is a world of upset and anger and fear so it just comes down to making that decision do do I want to continue choosing this? And then it's just like you start seeing through the trick or seeing the trick, seeing through the illusory nature of it and just choosing there has to be something else to choose. Even in the moment where the upset is so great, just the willingness to say, I need a miracle, you know, I need to be able to see this differently. That's such a huge shift because the ego wants what it made. Um, and so it's willing to have the misery to keep what it made. And then having worked with people, I get to see it just kind of over and over, um, how when we go into that story, we want all, we want the story, we want the, the, the life of, of misery and which comes, it's part and parcel of making that choice. There's no way, there's, there's no way to separate the two, to, you know, to have this life and misery, it's two sides of the same coin. Yeah, so actually this book deals quite a bit with just coming back to that decision just over and over. That's really what's underneath everything, um, making that decision. What Am I making a decision in purpose, really? That's the, the beautiful thing about the monastery is that there's this one purpose um, that comes up underneath everything, which is healing. Um, and everything we do is for that one purpose, which will take us toward the atonement and the undoing of all these beliefs that aren't true.